Do you know how many muscles are involved in the human face to make a, a smile? Th this is still debated because different people uh, smile differently and use more or less muscles, but there are 43 muscles in most human faces. And depending on the person, the majority of those muscles can be involved in smiling. Yet there's one nerve responsible for coordinate, coordinating all of this. It, it's a nerve that runs um, from the, a major part of your brain and branches out in five different directions. And it's like the conductor. It coordinates all the muscles to work together to smile, to frown, to uh, make confused looks, to reflect whatever emotions you're having. Think of this all next time you see someone making strange faces. There's a lot of muscles involved in coordinating that. And that person is doing a facial workout. Do you sense that your family, your workplace, your church is a coordinated, beautiful smile? Or do you sense something is missing? Perhaps there's a, there's a central nerve um, problem. There's a lack of that central nerve uniting everyone and giving them a reason to smile and use their, their muscle to be part of that. Perhaps the facial expression uh, you see in the people around you looks more confused than smiley. Perhaps some of the muscles are working themselves like crazy as other muscles don't know what they're supposed to be doing. Are the muscles getting along and supporting each other? We're gonna learn today that Christ is our coordinating nerve each of us is a muscle in his body. We need Christ to direct and train us. And we need exercise to grow and build up our collective muscles. It's time for us to grow up with Christ. A lesson from Ephesians 4, verses 11 to 16. He himself gave the apostles as well as the prophets as well as the evangelists, as well as the pastors and teachers for the purpose of training the saints for the work of serving in order to build up the body of Christ. This is to continue until we all reach unity in the faith and knowledge of the Son of God, resulting in a mature man with a stature reaching to the measure of the fullness of Christ. The goal is that we would no longer be little children, tossed by the waves and blown around by every wind of teaching when people use tricks and invent clever ways to lead us astray. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we would in all things grow up into Christ who is the head. From him, the whole body being joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows in accordance with Christ's activity when he measured out each individual part. He causes the growth of the body so that it builds itself up in love. Growing up is about being connected to Christ from beginning to end, that coordinating uh, nerve, all right? Each of us needs to be connected to Christ to know why to care at all, why to get up in the morning, why to even bother with other people, um, why to get along, why to work together, to know why to smile. Right? What reasons do we have to smile and to keep on working and to keep on using our gifts in this, uh, in this world? We need Christ to 
to tell us what we're accomplishing by being together and working together, what his big goals for us are. Okay, the muscles are there. The muscles are all here in the church. You are the muscles. You are the ligaments. They, they need to know their part. They need to know they have a part. They belong. And that each one has a unique function and a unique way of supporting the other parts. They need to know how the other muscles around them need them and how they need the other muscles around them. So why care? Why do I want to be connected to these other muscles? Because Christ wants us to grow up so we can produce one big smile together that's going to outlast and power through all the world's broken and empty promises. What the world tries to give us and can't, Christ already has. You heard it in the teaching, speaking the truth in love, we would in all things grow up into Christ, who is the head. From him, the whole body, being joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows in accordance with Christ's activity when he measured out each individual part. He causes the growth of the body so that it builds itself up in love. When we're growing up as a body, uh, with Christ at the head, with Christ connecting everything, coordinating everything, giving us a reason to care at all. Things like this happen in the year 2020. This is from one of our new school parents. I uh, thoroughly enjoyed the Thanksgiving lunch sent home from my child's school today. We are so thankful this year for so much. And her school is one of the top biggest blessings this year. Hearing her come home talking about God and singing Christmas songs lately has filled my heart with such joy. Hashtag blessings. Hashtag Thanksgiving. Hashtag Thanksgiving lunch. Hashtag lunchtime. Hashtag thankful. Hashtag Thanksgiving break. Did you know that little children smile on average? 400 times a day. Guess how many times a day adults smile? The average adult, 20 times a day. No wonder Jesus praises the faith of little children. Some might argue that adults have seen the underbelly of the world and have less reasons to smile. While it's definitely true that we have seen more and we no longer look at the world with rose-colored glasses, the Christian adult who knows their scriptures, like the one we read today, has more reasons for joy than anyone else. This does not always equate to smiles, but perhaps contentment, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control, and virtues like this. We can exercise these virtues because... We know Christ is holding us all together through everything that's happening around us. These virtues are evidences of maturity. I concluded a few years ago that as we mature as Christians, it's not about becoming more independent from God. Like a parent raises their child to move out, spread their wings, become independent. Um, Christian maturity is actually a, about being a child who looks to God in everything. And God alone. Not being tossed here and there by every new fad of teaching, by every new popular philosophy and way of looking at life, but looking to God and God alone to uh, guide you in everything. How rude we have been to one another this year. Under stress, how rude we can be. How nasty we can be. How competitive. How jealous. How immature. 
how we have taken one another for granted, how we have undervalued the part that some people play in the body, how we have overburdened and overworked other parts of the body and made them carry all the load. We, we need to be better connected to Christ. This time has been a wake-up call for the body of Christ. We have taken our eyes off of him. We have uh, become like that child who's run away from home and isn't looking to him in everything. Either we're looking to ourselves or we're looking to political leaders to face, fix all of our problems. We're looking to some human agency to do what only God can do. Or we've just lost all hope. And we've thrown up our hands and we think, you know what? Doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be that way. We need to be better connected to Christ. He is our nourish, nourishment. We need more training and exercise. And what better time to have a spiritual training and exercise than during these times right now? Spiritual revival. We need to put the faith that Christ has taught us into practice, especially when things aren't going well. That's the time to flex those spiritual muscles of prayer and uh, disciplined you know, devotion and time in God's word. And that's the time to practice that patience and gentleness and kindness and self-control and all those virtues when it's, when it's hardest. When your boss, you don't see eye to eye. That's a great time to use those spiritual muscles. And instead of using the uh, tricks of the world, manipulation and backstabbing and uh, passive aggressiveness, just be a Christian. Be a Christian. Be who Christ has taught you to be. These are very hard things. And oh, how we have failed in this year. How immature we have been. And yet, Christ has not left us. Christ has not left his children. He's come after us as we've wandered away, as we've gotten lost, even during these times. Christ did not gripe about how foolish his disciples were. He taught them. He modeled maturity for them. Christ did not wait for the religious institutions of his day to change. He revolutionized religion by doing the crazy things he said he would do. Dying and rising from the dead. Christ did not go into a shell of misery uh, during the worst year of his life. A year that was way worse than 2020. The pressure on him increased to the breaking point, the plots, the traps, the annoying things his disciples said and thought and thought about. He turned the worst year of his life into the best year of human history. This is a mature person. That is a life with a purpose. Christ is maturity. Christ is love. Christ was and is unshakable. And those who are connected to Christ, that's you. That's me. We're the muscles. Those who are connected to the head of the body are loved by God and are fully forgiven for all of our immaturities. In Christ, there's no reason to be jealous or competitive. There's no reason to take each other for granted or to undervalue certain people or, or over, overburden others. We are all part of the body. All needed. All gifted. All equal. In Christ, we are unshakable. Even when this life shakes us to the core, and it will. If it hasn't yet, it will. We are becoming mature together as we learn to speak Christ's truth in love. What he tells us in his clear black and white scriptures. Not my truth, not my version of the truth. The truth Christ reveals in his word. The word that we latch onto like a bottle. 
all right? It's time to grow up. It's time to spring forward from the strength and unity that God's forgiveness gives us. It's time to hear God telling us, you're forgiven. Now, let's try this again. Together. I'll be right here. All right? It's time to build up our muscles. It's time to spread those smiles. Not fake happiness, not forced happiness, not tricks or gimmicks. A real genuine unity in faith. A real genuine unity in our knowledge and about Christ and everything that each member of the body gets to be a part of. That's what I heard that school parent saying. Um, I'm seeing something here. My child is coming home talking about God, singing Christmas songs. What a blessing these, these people are for our family. That is, that is um, how pastors and teachers and evangelists and spiritual leaders train others to, for lives of service, inspire others for lives of service. Um, spiritual leaders are to serve well, lead well, take care of the people in their care, and really model for them, okay, what we're doing here in this little time we have together, whether it's a little time of worship or a, a little time of being in school or this, this little you know, program, what we do here now, okay, take that home, replicate it. You can have this all the time, right? The teaching today would have us think about our relationships with the spiritual leaders of God's church. That is, the apostles and prophets. The, they wrote the scriptures, right? And, and pastors, teachers, and evangelists. That's the list we're given here in Ephesians 4. We, we want to let pastors that we do have do what they're good at. Um, do what God has gifted them to do. Here, we are, th this lesson tells us that pastors are to train the saints for the work of serving. That is their main job. So just as the pastor, teacher, or evangelist is a gift from God to the people, a gift to be taken care of and appreciated and uh, supported, right? Um, you are a gift. You are a gift to God's church, to God's people, to the other muscles in the body. You are a gift to the world as you do the work of Christ, as you do the activities that matter to Christ. You have a place. You have a role. Um, it says right here that Christ m measured out each individual part. He constructed and designed the body his body, just the way it should be. He picked out what muscle, what ligament you would be, and how you would need the others and they would need you. All right? So what this means practically is that a maturing group of Christian people will have more and more people involved in the mission, That, uh, but in ways that those people are actually gifted for, actually enjoy doing, have the skills to do. There will be less and less talk of, I'm doing this because no one else will and it has to be done. Less and less talk of, I was guilted into doing this. I got my arm twisted into doing this. There will be more people serving joyfully and uh, doing what they're good at in life. I'm not just talking about in this little thing we call church. Um, this is, the church's work is is uh, helping people find who Christ made them to be in all areas of their life, in all the relationships that they have. One of the pastor's big jobs is to create that kind of environment um, where people can thrive in, where people can learn and support each other and uh, be, be energized to be the body of Christ 24-7. Um, where, where God has placed them. I could already point, I could humbly point to hundreds of examples uh, where people are enjoying what they're doing in life. Even if their job is tough and even if it's stressful, um, 
and, and when I say job here, I mean not just you know punching the clock job. That's that's huge. But whatever they are doing, whether it's volunteering, it's their their day job, it's uh, the relationships they have. A pastor or a spiritually mature person encourage them to use their God-given gifts. And maybe at first they looked at that person like deer in the headlights. <laughs> I could never do that. Um, that's not me. I, I'm too scared. I'm not good enough. And uh, because the spiritually mature person encouraged them, they're now using their gifts for the benefit of others. As, uh, and it's all, it's all praise to Christ, all worship to Christ. So let's, let's wrap this up. God's people benefit when their pastor is using the personality and gifts that God gave him and when he's not trying to be someone that he's not. The pastor can be a great example of how he's one muscle in the body, an important muscle, and he has an important role, but he's a, got a limited role. He's not Jesus Christ. Jesus is the head and we're his body and we all have a part to play. And each person fits together as muscles in that body. It takes a lot of wisdom and maturity to uh, figure out how everyone goes together and fits together, but it's worth it. It takes a lot of wisdom and maturity as a person to decide what to spend time on and energy on and where your limits end, what to say no to, what not to do, all right? You need to sleep too, right? A body needs sleep, rest, and, you know, needs to recharge and needs, needs food and to take care of itself. So let your pastors and spiritual leaders know what you think their gifts and strengths are. What if we focus more on gifts and strengths, um, whether it's for our spiritual leaders, for one another, instead of always nitpicking all what's going wrong, the weaknesses? And many of you have been so good at this. You might be surprised that I actually listen to all the feedback you give me. And I keep a running log of all your different comments and your feedback. And what's getting through, what's communicating, what's helping you, um, and what's not. And, and I actually take what you're saying into consideration. And uh, it helps me know what to do more of and what to do less of. I take all your feedback into consideration um, as I decide what to do and uh, how to do it. I don't just take one comment here and there, base all my actions on that one comment, super positive or super, super negative. I take it all. So thank you. Thank you. You're doing what the body of Christ is built to do. You're growing up. You're gifted. You're Christ's gifts to the world. He's given your lives back. He's redeemed you, repackaged you, and repurposed you. So be the gift God made you to be. Amen.